Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Cannabis News. I'm here with Joe Claire. It's October 9th, 2019. The show, as always, is presented by the Marijuana Times. Find us at marijuanatimes.org today. We're talking about cannabis banking legislation and its chances and its chances in the Senate. Also, one of the biggest deals in the marijuana industry has fallen through. And weed titan Mike Tyson is making moves on a world stage. The world stage. All that coming up. First, of course, Canvas News is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides grow safe and poison-free with NatureSide. Don't use harmful chemicals. Don't use banned pesticides. If you're going to do it, do it right. Do it with NatureSide, nature-side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. Now over 500 episodes. Thank you, NatureSide. This first story is by yours truly. At MarijuanaTimes.org, does cannabis banking legislation have a chance in the Senate? As you know, last month, the historic vote in the House, the Safe Banking Act passed the House, now moves on to the Senate, has to go through the committee process, the Senate Intelligence Committee, or not the Intelligence Committee, the Banking Committee Chairman uh, from Idaho has said that he's going to uh, give it a hearing, so we'll see what comes of that. Uh, I got a chance to talk with Don Murphy, the Director of Federal Policies at the Marijuana Policy Project. Uh, he said the chances of it being signed into law at the end of this term, uh, by the end of the term, are better than 50-50. Remember, the congressional terms are two years, and this current congressional term ends at the end of next year, at the end of 2020. So he said the chances are better than 50-50 that it'll make it through the Senate by that time. Not much is going to happen this year. There's only a couple weeks left in uh, the congressional session. And obviously things are um, things are heated. Uh, people are occupied in Washington D.C. with the various goings on, the battle between the Democrats and President Trump. So we're pretty much going to take this victory for now and start working on something else in the House, probably. And uh, hopefully this will get through the Senate next year. Um, maybe sometime in the midst of the the circus that is the presidential election. A lot of the Democratic nominees who are senators will drop out and they'll come back to the Senate and maybe do some Senate business. That would be pretty cool if they would do that and uh, maybe pass the banking legislation. We'll see. We'll see. And then obviously 2020 and an election happens and people leave, people come in. We'll see what happens with all that. But uh, right now, the focus remains on the House and the Moore Act and, and legislation like that. Well, obviously, if anything happens in the Senate, we will let you know because we're cannabis news. This next story is from the Chicago Tribune. One of the biggest deals in the cannabis industry just fell apart with the MedMen farm can breakup means for marijuana in Illinois. Um, obviously, it's a Chicago Tribune story, so they're focused on Illinois. But the bigger story is that the conglomerate that was going to come together will not. The conglomerate to be is not to be when MedMen Enterprises... Agreed to buy Chicago-based farm can last year. The $682 million deal was one of the biggest in the history of the legal marijuana industry. Now it's one of the biggest to fall apart. On Tuesday, the companies announced they were abandoning a transaction that already had been delayed by regulatory hurdles. But MedMen is not walking away empty-handed. It's still getting a piece of Pharmacan's Illinois business just in time to prepare for the January 1st start of recreational marijuana sales in the state in exchange for forgiveness of certain debt, MedMen is getting one of Farmacan's two growing facilities, a retail store, and a license to open another retail location. Um, under the law legalizing recreational marijuana, only existing operators will be allowed to grow weed for recreational customers until late 2020 at the earliest, which is why it's important that MedMen have these licenses uh, before things get going. Last week, Farmacan's two growing facilities were among the first in Illinois to receive licenses to start growing marijuana for recreational sales. MedMen co-founder and CEO Adam Bierman said in a news release, quote, Illinois has emerged as the most attractive opportunity for our longer-term strategic growth plan. The addition of those assets is a win for MedMen and our shareholders. So what was to be is not to be, but still uh, MedMen is going to get some locations in the very lucrative or at least soon to be lucrative Illinois market. Last but not least, this is from St. Lucia News Online, although it just seems to be a reprint of a story 
from the Daily Mail. Mike Tyson announces plans to bring marijuana empire to the Caribbean. Well, that's quite a title. <laughs> Mike Tyson has announced plans to bring his marijuana empire to the Caribbean with an annual conference in Antigua to rival the World Economic Forum's meeting at Davos. Former heavyweight champion met with Prime Minister Gostin Brown to discuss plans for an annual conference starting in April 2020 and a cannabis farm. Tyson is pioneering cannabis tourism with his 420-acre Tyson Ranch in California, which will feature a luxury hotel and golf course for guests to enjoy while lighting up. Iron Mike said he wanted Antigua and Barbuda to become a powerhouse for the plant and told reporters on September 20th, it will be a good for the country and will bring in much-needed funds to help your economy. I gotta say, I'm thinking about this, this is I read this story. People my age, I'm 40 years old, people who were aware of pop culture in, say, 1990. I turned 11 in 1990. It's a good area. People were aware of what was going on in 1990. And in that area, late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s, whatever, who came of age during that time, before millennials. It's a very odd time for us. And a lot of people younger than us don't get, don't have the perspective to know why it's so odd. This is a perfect example. Mike Tyson, in the late 80s, he was the heavyweight champion of the world. He was arguably the most famous person in the world. Everybody knew who Mike Tyson was when he was the champion. Early 90s, he becomes a convicted rapist. He has some uh, weird times in between then. You know, he has some problems with Don King. Don King stole a lot of money from him. He's married to Robin Givens at one point. Fast forward to now, he has a marijuana empire. He's talking to prime ministers in the Caribbean about setting up uh, worldwide summits for the cannabis industry. That's weird. For people who grew up with Mike Tyson, the original Mike Tyson, and Mike Tyson 2.0, a.k.a. convicted rapist, this is very odd. There's a lot of that. O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson, acquitted double murderer, convicted armed robber. Now he's on Twitter making videos about his fancy football team. And of course, of course, the most obvious, the icing on the cake. Of all of that, the president of the United States is Donald Trump. Donald Trump. The casino guy. The guy in Home Alone 2. And on the, that episode of The French Prince of Bel-Air. The guy who put his name on everything. Everybody knew who he was. Donald Trump. He's now president of the United States. It's all very odd. It's, for people my age and older, it's very, very odd. And to see what happens in 30 years, it's incredible. Incredible stuff. Sitting alongside the fighter, Prime Minister Brown said, quote, The conference will be like the Davos of cannabis. It will take place on an annual basis and will bring stakeholders from throughout the globe, for that matter, right here, on Antigua to discuss various opportunities within the industry. And sitting right there through it all is going to be Mike Tyson with his face tattoo. <laughs> his lisp. <laughs> I, it's just weird. There's no way I can put it. It's odd. He continues, so we are very excited about that. They're also interested in establishing a hotel accommodation property and they will be looking at a number of sites to determine suitability. Imagine all those leaders in the cannabis industry will be coming to the resort to stay at Mike Tyson's hotel for their worldwide cannabis industry conference. Ah, what a time to be alive. It's really, it's incredible stuff. I don't know what other way to put it. Oh, amazing. That's it for Cannabis News. We're here five days a week we cover all these stories and more check out marijuanatimes.org a lot of great articles there from a bunch of great writers social media links and more click the video tab there to find this show if you want the audio version of the show of course check out apple podcasts subscribe to us on youtube now 2500 subscribers click the notification bell so you know when a new episode has been posted your phone will tell you or your tablet or your device you watch youtube on it will alert you that a new episode of Cannabis News is available and you can go watch it. Again, what a time to be alive. Thanks, everybody, for using this show to spread the truth about cannabis, liking, sharing, and commenting on the videos. You are awesome. Thanks for watching and listening today. And we'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. Cannabis News.